Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop, your free weekly podcast delivered in high def all about Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at using layer styles to create image effects, and this is really pretty cool. There are a bunch of these that you can download from the website, and if you go over to Raster Vector, we have these posted. Plus, if you have the book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4, you can actually download more of these from PeachPit's website and the sample source image. Let's go ahead and make sure that this picture is an actual layer. We'll double click on it and we'll call it Windows. With that selected here, we're going to go ahead and use some of these layer styles. Now notice as I click, it modifies the image and we're getting a different look. The cool thing here is that we can use layer styles to create a custom look for the image by taking things like different overlays, pattern overlays, gradient overlays, texture overlays to stylize the image. Let's step through here and you'll see that we instantly have these different cool one-click looks. Here's sort of a frosted look or a little bit of a neo type look, green with some scan lines. So, pretty cool stuff. Here's a nice watercolor painting and I'll show you how these are made. Let's clear that out and click on the little FX here and I'm going to start by using a pattern overlay. Now there's lots of patterns. The default one is absolutely abysmal. What you want to do is click here and come on over to the list and choose some. The artist surfaces and the grayscale papers and nature patterns are quite nice. Let's use that and we'll just pick a texture here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go with this one here, nice soft modeled. And we'll scale that up a bit using the scale slider and then blend it. So let's try something like soft light. And you see that's doing pretty good or maybe darker a little bit with multiply. And that's nice. We have a nice modeling of the texture there. We could then grab a overlay such as a gradient overlay and choose two colors. So let's go from a dark red to a lighter red. There we go. And we'll set that to hue mode so it tints the image. That's looking pretty cool. I'm now going to go ahead and put a little bit more in there. Let's take and add just a little bit of a inner shadow. And we'll crank that out so it's nice and big. And play with the distance. And notice how it darkens the edges down. If we didn't want that black, we could switch it to white. Just be sure to change that back to normal mode and you get a nice soft vignette effect along the outside edge of your picture. And click OK. When you have a look you like, just go over to the Styles panel and click to add it. And I'll call this here Distressed Red. And it's that simple. It's added in as a style that you can use. Notice there's lots here. So as we try different ones out, we get different looks. Here's a really nice sort of old print look. And this is being done with three things. First off, an inner glow. That's putting a little bit of a border around the edge. Then a color overlay. Double click on that and you see that it's this nice sort of sepia tone being placed to color mode. If I want to tweak that, I could push it a little bit more to the orange. And maybe take that to a darker mode like multiply and it pushes it down. Or hue, be nice and subtle. That's working well. And then lastly, we added a pattern overlay. Quick double click on that, you see what's going on there is this orange distressed pattern. Now there's lots of patterns you could choose from. If you load that up, go ahead and take a look at some of the nature patterns. And you'll see some cool ones that are flower driven. Or better yet, the rock patterns, which are quite nice. And I like some of these marbleish textures. Take that, play with the scale, toss that right on, maybe multiply mode or a hard light mode. I like some of these down here, just a little bit more distressing. And that's looking pretty good. We'll distress that out, blow it up, lower the opacity down a bit, and we got a cool weathered effect for our picture. I'll click OK and let's save that and we'll call this here Old Brown. And you see it's really that simple. So you can build up these custom layer styles and quickly switch between them to stylize your image. Now here I'm using a custom set that I loaded and let me just go ahead and save those styles. And I'm just going to save that out. 
and I'll call these RH styles for my name. You can call it your own name or load your own set. Then what I'm going to do is actually come on over here and load the photographic effects for the default ones that Photoshop comes with and take a look at some of these. Here's a really cool sort of inverse negative effect using a color overlay. What it's all it's doing is putting a white image on top in difference mode. We have some other cool things here like sepia tones and ghosted effect and screen back, nice duo tones, and really some cool things you could play with to get some ideas. And what I like about these is they're all just a quick click away to getting some nice looks without a lot of hard work. That's nice there, nice little difference in the blue channel or maybe a little bit of a pattern here. That's kind of cool, distressed orange look. So these encourage you to experiment and they really take away the fear because it's just a quick click. You can click and jump to one look, don't like it, click and try another. I like to build up a resource library of these so I can easily try things out. I'll often stylize my images when using them in a multi-page layout or maybe designing a brochure or a website where I want to use the photos more as a graphical element and this works really well. My name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com. And while you're there, jump on over to our bookstore. You can check out some of the many books we've worked on, including the new Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from PeachBit Press. Thanks again. created a new training title called Quick Fixes. And what you get to learn here is how to get more out of Photoshop. And it's a completely interactive experience. So you've got video tutorials to watch, you get all the hands-on files. Plus, once you've completed the lessons, you're welcome to take a quiz to see if the knowledge stuck. So we really want you to learn how to get more out of Photoshop, and the Quick Fixes title teaches you just that.